just helped you do all of this? A little bit, a little bit. But I mean, I've done a lot of it on my own. Uh, I mean, sometimes Stephen's come and help and stuff like that. Um, but mainly on my own. Um, and then it's sort of, I mean, I worked secretly for about eight years and never let anybody in the house at all. Yeah. Um, nobody saw anything really. And then decided at you know, a certain point it was time to open the doors a bit more to people. So, um, so it's been open for about four years. Uh, we've just had a BBC film done about the house and a um, Canadian documentary, which is quite an important one. It's going to be shown in Canada and the States. As of now, really, which goes back to childhood, it's the history all the way through to now. And the museum sort of changed, really, from um, being mosaics to being about my life, really. About my childhood, my loss and uh, bullying and, and stuff. I mean, I write about everything. I don't you see some of the writing on the doors and on the walls. Was it because you was going through stuff at the time? Yeah, it's a way of dealing with, with stuff. It's better to get rid of it and write about it or so, make something. Do you see with like all the bullying and the loss and the childhood, you add it all into like, did you make it all into art? Yes. Therapy. Artist therapy, really. When did you like design your front garden? Uh, that was done, I mean, the walls were built about three or four years ago, not very long, really. Um, and, um, and then suddenly working, you know, in the front garden. Um, so, because the house isn't going to be big enough for me to work in forever, so it sort of has to go out into the garden really more. What's your longest um, like, bit of work, like, like the longest that's taken you? In the house? Yeah, like one of your like, main pieces. The longest. I suppose the columns that are in the middle room <laughs> took about, you know, a few months to make because mosaicing is slow, you know, with the felt tips and the beads and all of the junk and stuff stuck all over. I mean, they take a long time to make. They have chicken wire inside them and there's paper stuffed in and it's, you know, and then they're cemented. So they, you know, they take a long time to make. Um, but now it's gone on to sort of, you know, other people's lives and, you know, collecting photographs and stuff from other locations. I mean, there's things from Paris here, from Brussels, Madrid, uh, Barcelona, from other countries really. So I, you know, I collect other people's lives and bring them here as well. So you're doing all the sculptures that you created, which one of them was your biggest accomplishment? Well I've just, I mean I also make sculptures for schools and all sorts of other things and I've just installed some sculptures on a school on Goose Green, just round the corner. So I think they're the, you know, because they're the latest, I always think they're the best. And they're about two metres high, they're big pieces. Um, How do you spell sculpture? S C U L U L P T U R E S. Sculptures. So, um, yeah, I mean, the house is about wanting to leave something behind, really. Um, a few years ago, National Trust got involved and they're, oh, really? yeah, they're going to take the house eventually. Are they? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, they are. Uh, which is quite an important step, really, because that means that the house is going to be protected, you know, forever, really. Um, you know, or as long as it lasts before it starts to fall apart. <laughs> so that's quite important. And there, there's only a couple of other places in the UK that are being protected in that way, so it's quite an important building, really or will be in years to come. So, um, I'm, you know, what just... What do you neighbours, actually? They're great, actually. Great. Yeah, I do involve them. I think it's important to involve neighbours. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, eventually I'm going to decorate all of the front of the house as well, so it's going to be pretty out there by the time I finish, <laughs> really. <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really good to get them yes. involved, both yeah. sides, really. Yeah. I mean, they're not in here every day, but, you know, they bring the kids in and... They, you know, they collect a few bits for me and stuff oh, like that. That's good. Um, the people bring a lot of things here as well. They leave things by the front gate, you know, little Do bags they? of stuff. Yeah. Mm. Uh, some of which is crap and some of which is, you know, it's mm. good stuff. Mm. Just depending on <coughs> um, Collecting the stuff's quite important. 
I mean, uh, you know, going out and hunting for new things to bring back is quite an important part of what this is about as well, really. And what's so, your what what what's your aim when you go to collect things? Well, what are you looking for? Well, I have lots of different themes that I'm working on, so I'm all, always looking for certain things, like in the porch where as you come into the house, on the right, there's a section of, of heads, so, you know, I collect heads, or I collect shoes for, you know, for exhibitions that I do, I write all over shoes, messages and things. Um, you know, there's lots of different themes going on, really. Photographs, letters, I mean, a lot of those photographs are from Portugal, from Lisbon, when I was there a few months ago. Um, some from Naples, I went there. So I do a fair amount of travelling as well mm. to get things. So what, none of them photos like? I don't know who they are, um, I've no idea. But I bought them because I'm interested, you know, in other people's lives really, and you know, other people's photographs, as well as my own, so I sort of... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah put that in here because lots of people do. Um, so, you know, it's collecting other people's lives and my life as well, putting it all together. Did you start with your life and then when you opened the gate started building in your Yeah, I did. I did. I started with my life and then it's moved on from there, really. Um, when you travel, uh, what's the place you go to that you most frequently to get inspiration? Paris. Paris, because it's, it's cheap, it's easy to get there. Um, and also, I mean, I've done a lot of exhibitions in Paris. There's a market for what I do in Paris. It's harder in England. So I've got Paris. There's just a different aesthetic, really. They un understand the use of junk and and recycling much more than what we do in you know in the UK. They have a tradition in France of recycling. They've been doing it a long time. Yeah. Um, so maybe I should talk about my education a bit as mm, well, should I? Mm. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, Candid camera. Okay. Well, I went to, uh, in the old days, I went to a secondary school, which is a long time ago, um, and uh, then went to university for eight years, did two degrees. So did you go, did you like... Go, go the whole year for Yes, I did, and left when I was about, what is it, 17 or something, with all levels and A levels. And um, I mean, I had a point to prove because I went to secondary school, we were told we were thick basically, and I thought, well, I'm not bloody thick, I can show you. <laughs> but I, I have a lot of stuff yeah. going on here. Uh, I mean, I'm, I am dyslexic, which doesn't help, but also it does at you know, the same time because it helps you. I mean, the reason why I do art is because that's my language, really, because I find writing quite difficult sometimes, so I get things mixed up, you know, the letters mixed up. So my language is using, you know, is making art, really. That's my way of speaking and, and you know, and writing. So anyway, yeah, then after secondary school, and uh, went to, um, to Liverpool University and then on to Manchester University two degrees, so the education system, the university system, I was in for nearly eight years, which is a long time. Um, oh, because you did two degrees? I did, and then I did two and a half years foundation course before that, so I did a lot of education, really. So and why did you do two? Weren't you sick of no. exams? No, no, I mean, the second degree was about me finding out who I was, really. I needed okay. to do a master's to find out what I wanted to do. In in life. Okay. Um, it gave me the opportunity to do that. How did your parents think of all this art? They were great. My parents were really supportive all the way through. that wasn't what they involved in art No. My dad worked on the railway and my mum was a cleaner. Uh, she was what you call a home help, where you go into older people's houses and wash floors and bottoms and all sorts of stuff she used to do. <laughs> but she did. You know, nothing fancy, that is what it is. So they gave me the opportunity through their support really to do what I'm doing now and one of the reasons why I'm doing it is because they were supportive. All the way through, all the way through to the end, on you know, until they died in two thousand and six. They both died in the same year. Um, 
which is part of what the house is about really. It's sort of about being an only child. Um, some of the sculptures that I make are comfort sculptures really. Uh, you sort of make a family, you make things that give you comfort. And that's quite an important part of it really. Um, what else should I talk about? What else do you want to know? You're asking some good questions. Mm, very yeah, good. Yeah, really good <coughs> question. Hey. You get sick of it. Yes. Yeah, you do get sick of it sometimes. It's not always great. It's like um, it's a bit like a love affair. You have a you have a relationship with it. Sometimes you're really excited by what you're doing, and sometimes it's quite a big responsibility, really. And you think, what the fuck am I doing this for? <laughs> <laughs> so it varies, really. Most of the time, I really like it, but you know, it can vary. Um, but then I don't just do the House of Dreams, I also work with the Arts, Arts Council and make sculptures for schools and for public <coughs> environments and things like that. Um, it's quite a tough journey, if you want an easy journey you, you know, you'd never become an artist because it's very, you've got to be tough, there's a lot of people out there doing it and you've got to be quite competitive. Um, and go and get the work, it could, you know, it isn't going to come to the door, so you, you know, you learn to be quite pushy, really. Did you ever, like, did you ever think that your house would be that like, in your genre? No. No, I didn't. No, I didn't, really. Um, but it's quite obsessive, doing this. I'm quite obsessive with work. I work quite hard. It's, uh, it's important to, I mean, there is time in my life for other things, but it's quite obsessive something that I need to do to get a drug on me. Did your love for art drive some people away from you? I'm sorry, did my love for art drive people away from you? That's a good question. Anything. That's a good question, yes, is my answer. <coughs> and I won't go into any more than that. Yes, because if you... I've learnt, I've learnt not to be so... I mean, I used to work really, really all the time, all day and you know, a night for years on end. And uh, I've sort of learned uh, <coughs> when to stop because you need other things in your life too. You need people. Um, so yes, I was divorced the first marriage I was divorced because of working mm -hmm. all the time. So that was a good question, Lewis. Mm -hmm. Um... But I do have a lot of fun, I really enjoy it. Um, and, you know, when we have our open days, you know, I never know who's going to come in the house, so we can get up to 100 people sometimes on a Saturday, which is a lot of people. Uh, so I need help, you know, with um, keeping an eye on everything, really. Hey. Oh, okay. All right, we'll leave your number. Yeah. <laughs> It's sort of, you know, interesting, so yeah, you know, you never know who's going to come in really. Yeah. Uh, you know, lots of work offers, lots of jobs. Uh, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I see a lot of schools here. I mean, I do a lot of work in schools as well, because, you know, I use materials and have fun and make costumes and hats and stuff. And just have some fun. I mean, I have fun most of the time, really. That's what I, that's what I do. Um, but of course, I won't see really see the you know the benefits of this until I'm not here anymore because the house will be open on a much more regular basis, mm. you know, with national trucks. Whereas I say, you know, I mean, there's a lot of no's because I say no when I'm because I still work here as well, so it's quite difficult to share the space, you know, with strangers walking through your workspace because it's quite yeah. a private space yeah. really. Um, Do you think they'll keep everything as you leave it? Yeah. That's the plan anyway. Yeah, I mean, if they I give mean, do you have a say in what they do? Yeah, here? up to a point. I mean, I won't be here then, will I, of course? No, but before, but, beforehand. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all written down. Whatever, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, they've given me some money to do the project, which I've spent now a long time ago. Uh, I think it's about £5,000, which doesn't go very far when you buy material. But at least, they, you know, they're... they're you know, it's important to know that it's going to be protected and I'm not just spending every day doing this and then it's all going to be jumped, you know, by a property developer or something. Actually, we're all talking about the National Trust as though they used to just be apprentice. Yes, of course, but that's a good point. Not, do you know what the National Trust is? Has anybody ever heard of it before? Mm -hmm. well, it's it's a good question. Yeah, it's a 
think that's a good point. It's an organisation that buys up really, really old or unusual properties that, that should be kept for future generations. Yeah, it's for, uh, you know, they protect the property, something that they think has value, you know, whatever that, you know, the value might be. I mean, in, in the past it's been very old, old buildings that were built in the 16th century, mm. 17th century, really. but, you know, they are actually buying much more modern buildings now. I mean, they haven't bought this building, I have actually donated this building to them. Um, That's so, very generous of you. Well, They've got the money. Yeah, I think you ought to rethink well, that. Well, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Okay. That's alright. You see, for here, yeah, you know how you have to pay rent in a house, but because you don't live down here, do you still have to pay rent here? Yes. Oh. Same as everybody else. Yeah, you have to pay. In ten years from now, we'll do this. What would you expect to accomplish? That's a good question. Your mm. good <laughs> questions. Uh, what do I want to accomplish? I think I want to continue to learn more about myself through making art, because this is a, a journey about finding out about who I am as a person, really. So keep on opening the boxes <coughs> in your head, really to discover new things. Uh, that's important to me. Can you give us an example of that? For instance, um, you say that it's about a journey, about discovering yourself, etc. Is there anything that you'd like to give us a concrete example of how this work has helped you to understand yourself? Yeah, I can tell you all about that, really. I mean, I can just sort of tell you, you know, a bit about it anyway. Yeah, just I mean, I mean, the work that is on the walls behind you there, the em uh, embroideries, yeah. are they're all stories. They're about people in my lives that I've lost, basically. Uh, on the left-hand side, you've got my mother, who was called Madge. That's the blue one, going up to heaven with her angel, <coughs> angel's wings. On the right, you've got my dad, who was called... Charlie, but she used to call him Charlie Wow, so that was his nickname <laughs> for her. And he was a joker, so I made him look like Punch and Judy. Punch. And then the person in the middle was a special person to me, um, who also died at the same time. Um, and that was my nickname for that person. So, um... That's a story, really. On the right is, you know, there's a little song there that my dad used to sing to me, which is about lumps of pudding, which is a very old song. Because um, I'm from the north of England, so, you know, the songs and things are different up there to what they are here. Um, so that is an example of, um, of um, a story of my life. I mean, I can tell you much more about it. My relationship with Mexico that I have, which is a, an important part of the work. Um, mm. So that's sort of that really. Um, I mean I work a lot with dreams as well, I work a lot with things that I dream about and then I make them. Uh, most of the sculptures and things in the house, by my bed I've got a notebook and then I write, uh, you know, I do some sketches when I've dreamt about something then I get up and make it, so it's instant really, it's quick. Um, yeah, so that's an example of really. All, all the embroideries are stories, I mean, you know, the other one that's by you was also another story. The one on the floor there. And they're about relationships and people that I've loved and people that have let me down sometimes. Um, so it's, you know, a whole load of stuff that sort of reflects my life really. And that's happened more and more, really, as it's gone along. I mean, now I don't, you know, I write, I write about what I feel about, really. You know, it's my house. I'll do what I want. So I, I don't block my anger or my joy or whatever it is. I just write about it. Um, I think the house, you know, the visitors can be quite because lots of people come here who are on their own journeys. They they want permission to do things themselves, and I've never. Uh, needed permission to do anything, I just do it. Um, so in a way it can help people to set them free to, you know, I don't know, to go on and climb a mountain or 
mm. or do something that they want to do in their lives, whatever that is really, you should do it, because you only live once. So this <coughs> museum can appeal to people, all sorts of people. Yes, it it's does. It's not really, when we talk about target audience, it's not... No, very, there isn't a target audience. People, like, there is no target audience, so can you write that down? No, I mean, there isn't, you know, a target audience. No. no. How did you um, just write down this note? How did this first sex like anybody? Yeah, how did you come at it at first? Okay, um, I thought because, you know. Lots yeah, of Yeah, of course you can. Um, well, because I live here, I don't want to be inundated, so it was really important to me to be quite uh, discerning as to where um, I let people know about, you know, the House of Dreams. So the flyers go into. Uh, you know, or uh, any, um, I mean, there's lots of features written about the house, but they have to be in the right publications. I mean, you know, I wouldn't put it in the daily press, for instance, because you'd be, you know, inundated. I mean, sometimes anyway, we get, you know, so many people on the front of the house wanting to come in, it can be quite difficult. So it's marketed in, in you know, the right sort of places to be shown to the right sort of people, really, people who are artists or media sort of people, um, people who are interested in visual things really, it's, that's important to do that. And also they're going to pay, I mean they're paying £10 to come in, so that sorts people out there. People who are piss taken and just sort of filling in an hour are not going to spend 10 quid. So, you know, we take the money as soon as they come through the door to make sure they're serious about wanting to look around. And, uh, what did you ask me? <laughs> I can't remember. How did you like promote it? Oh yeah, I mean, just really word of mouth basically. Word of mouth is what. Um, and that's amazing how that can work. But also it's really good not always to be available. I mean, lots of people want to, you know, someone could ring me now and say, can I come and have a look? And I, you know, maybe two or three years ago I was saying yes, whereas I say no come on the open day. So you don't always need to be available for people, it's, mm. you know, make them work a bit. Do you like random numbers just call you and come and see you and do Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you shouldn't always say yes. I'm not always as obliging as I used to be. I think play hard to get sometimes, it's quite a good thing. What do you think? I think I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you got any questions, Shakai? Uh, Got any questions, Shakai? Nothing? No? Okay. Anything from your sheet? Have a look at the questions on your sheet. Well, there's been some good questions today. Mm. Are any of you thinking of doing art sort of later on? Or? Yeah. Yeah? All oh, right, okay. So, uh, how would you go about doing that? Like right now, I don't like putting spray paint, I just like sketch, okay. like the writing and yeah. stuff, you know, and I don't know, I just like that. Alright, oh, okay. Like Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, I think that you find a lot of people who go into the arts have, have certain problems in terms of it's a way of dealing with those problems, because in the art world anything goes, really, which is really good. You can do and you know you can do what you want. It's quite um, fluid. I mean, it you know depends where you're working, but certainly the market that I work in, you know, I make the rules. I do what I want, really. Is most of it based on emotions or not? Yeah, quite a lot of it is. Yeah, that's where it comes from when you're yeah. being creative. Yeah. You know, like yeah, the museum. Is it like any? Let's say you know. Any sort of time. That's okay. Like, well, I don't know if it was the 1980s. Oh, right. Oh, right, okay. Sort of, no, like, I'm. Sort yeah. Of time. Sure. I mean, there's a mix of all sorts of things in the house. Well, you know, once you have a look around, you'll see. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's stuff from different eras. I mean, there's oh. stuff from now as well. It's a sort of mix of all sorts of stuff, really. So, you through your years of art, were there any artists you looked up to on the style that you? Good question, yes I did. Um, Matisse, Henri Matisse, M-A-T-I-S-S-E. Uh, there's an artist who 
is showing now, I mean there's an exhibition just opened at Tate Modern, uh, called Sonia Delaunay, uh, who was a great artist, uh, D-E-L-A-U-N, D-E-L-A-U-N-E-Y, Sonia. L-A-U-N-Y-E. No, there's no E on the end, just a Y, Salon, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no E on the end. Sonia Delorme. Um So I suppose they were the, you know, the main, because they use a lot of colour, and I love colour, so, I, you know, I always look to people who use colour and know a lot of colour. But so did Van Gogh. Yeah, it, it did. was quite vivid, wasn't it? It was, but it wasn't as interesting for me, really. Mm -hmm. I think because the the other two were more decorative, how they used shapes and colour and large scale work. I like. I'm very inspired by big work. Mm -hmm. uh, I've just been to see an exhibition this weekend of Francis Bacon. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Francis Bacon. Have you heard of him? That's really interesting work. Oh, there's a book on there, you can have a look if you like. Been to see a show this weekend, Francis Bacon, which is really inspiring. Not easy to look at. Difficult. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, well there's a book on there. I was up in Norwich at the weekend. Why is it difficult? Because it's, 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 well you have a look and see what you think, but it's, it's not easy. It's about murder and about all sorts of other stuff. It's really interesting, I like it. Yeah. It's quite brave, I think, about and other stuff, <laughs> which is quite long-winded. <laughs> it's about, yeah, it is <laughs> very interesting. I mean, he's our, you know, one of our sort of greatest painters of the, se of, of, um, the last century. Yeah, it certainly is. Mm. So that's it in a nutshell, I suppose. I mean, I can talk to you more about it, and I can show you, you know. I mean, if you want to have a look around, I mean, I can talk to you about how much work costs if somebody wants to buy things. I mean, I don't know whether that's on your list, is it? No, I you don't know. think we've got that on the list. Um, um, could not, always add stuff in, though. And not all of the, yeah, when well, you can do. Not all of the work that I do is for sale. Uh, I say one of the teaching vibes, so we all have something to take back to show Melissa. Oh. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, because I don't think she's been here yet, Melissa, yeah. is she? Yeah. So it'd be really nice if the teachers could find something to take back. It'd be really nice if the teachers had the money to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be very happy with that. But thank you very much, then, Steve. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's it's wonderful. Go and have a look. I'm going to have a look in the front garden if you can want you, as well. See if you can address all of these questions in some way.